Hi, I'm Chris Bird. I help business owners make a lot more money, work a lot less hours, and have an even better life than the one they dreamed of when they first opened up their business. How to find your love match. Is it even possible? In the days when people were more attuned to their bodies and their souls, finding the perfect love match was not so difficult. In our modern society, we are so hung up on appearances, nice smelling perfumes, glossy magazines and advertisements, that our idea of a real man or woman is distorted. This makes it even harder to see what sort of partner might be best for us. The problem with these sweet smelling perfumes, for one thing, is that the body smell of the person is camouflaged. This makes it doubly difficult to determine whether this person is right for you. The touch, the vibe and energy of the person are all key factors in the game of love. If the smell of your partner is not right, you can be sure that something is wrong as far as a match is concerned. It becomes even more complicated with a contraceptive pill. Without the pill, the body is driven to find the perfect biological match, the strongest and best male with the right genetic profile and matching immune system to produce strong and healthy offspring. This attraction is true to nature. However, with the pill, the sensorial perceptions are somewhat reversed. Research says that the body becomes driven towards anti-reproductive behavior and therefore the biological cues and telltale signs that would normally say, get away from this guy, his smell is not right, he is not healthy for you, suddenly fail to send the right message. The deciphering process is confused by the pill and so a match is made for two people that without the anti-contraceptive pill may not have happened. So what to do? In the beginning our love relationships are usually based on physiological and biological attraction. Therefore it is illogical to think there can be a match if we don't like the touch and feel of our partners and vice versa. When the relationship ends up being based on purely survival realities, we will understand how so many relationships can end with such bitter arguments and fights over money, property and children. With survival comes work, and it may be that one of the partners works and the other does not. For instance, if one partner is raising the children, the wife needs to keep his or her interests alive as far as possible. Failing to do so will leave him or her feeling unworthy, resentful and undervalued. Not only that, dominance in the areas of careers, finances and money is one of the main causes of arguments in families of traditional values, or for that matter, in any relationship at all. We know that money arguments in relationships can put tremendous pressure on couples. And if we can go beyond these survival problems in our relationships, as we must. And remember why we came together in the first place, things can go easier. Nothing takes the glitter off love in relationships more than each partner being reduced to a specific role of provider or children raising, whether or not the genders are reversed. Thanks for watching or listening. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more videos like this one.